Today, are you really fearful of losing or are you just afraid of winning? Get that <laughs> trash out of your life. You have legacies to build. We grew that business from 3.4 million to 17.1. Horsepower, not horse shit. You want to be the parent that's an ally. They don't need another friend. Not everybody's cup of whiskey. Toughest advice for the toughest businessmen. Be relentless. Michael McLean, nobullbook.com, deadline uh, for my newsletter, the Michael McLean World Building letter is this Friday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to receive my paper and ink newsletter, you gotta move and uh, sign up at badassletter.com before this Friday, last day of September, and uh, that way you won't miss out on the October uh, paper and ink newsletter that will be in the mail in uh, the next uh, couple of weeks. So uh, I couldn't stand to read another book. I couldn't stand to read another article and I certainly couldn't stomach listening to another podcast or seminar talk about the fear of failure. It's almost to the point where most of the gurus and the pretend experts and entrepreneurs and businessmen who are excuse makers and pretenders, they talk about constantly their fear of failure. I'm fearful of failing. I'm fearful of the pain of failing. And this is why there's tens of thousands of books this is why this is the go-to prescription for many consultants. Well, you're not achieving what you want in your world or in your life um, or in your business because you are you're fear, you fear failure. You're afraid, you're afraid of failing. Now, after 22 years of coaching elite athletes and 31 years in the entrepreneurial trenches, I do understand that there is, of course, some factual base to the fact that we all have fears. That's normal. We're all motivated by pain and by pleasure. And one of the fears that we naturally have is a fear of failure. Nobody wants to fail. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. Nobody wants to lose. But it's been far, far overdone. And in typical badass fashion, the one thing that the gurus or the wet behind the ear consultants always taught, they never talk about, is what I've always considered the most important factor in success is, are you afraid of winning? Are you fearful of winning? And that's a question that you almost never ever get asked. Like if I'm stuck on something in my business or in my marriage or in my in my world in general, I always stop and ask myself, am I afraid of achieving this goal? Not, am I scared or am I afraid or am I being a chicken shit about something? No, I stop myself and I ask myself and I journal, am I, in this case, afraid of winning? Am I afraid of being successful? And I have used that for a number of years, a couple of decades now, and I believe it's based in accurate thinking. I understand that everybody has a fear of failure, but I believe a more crippling, a more crippling uh, fear is the actual fear of winning. Whether it's a championship, whether it's a goal, whether it's a mission you're on, whether it's improving and transforming your world, are you afraid? of success. Are you afraid of winning? Now, this goes into the root of the problem uh, that I was taught years and years ago that every businessman has their self-esteem, their self-image, and it's like a thermostat on the wall. So visualize a thermostat on the wall, you know, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 70 degrees, 90 degrees. And I believe every entrepreneur and businessman, I, I believe that your self-image, okay, and your self-esteem, how you see yourself and how you believe that other people see you is that thermostat. 
and everybody has a particular setting on that thermostat. And I'll use myself as an example. So let's say with my self-image and my self-esteem, you know, it's, 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 it's built through childhood, it's built through your life, it's built through your parents, it's built through the feedback and experience you've had. Let's say that I have a thermostat reading, a self-esteem reading of 82, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's what happens in the real world. And this is how being afraid of winning can sabotage your dreams, goals, and aspirations. So I'm going along in my business and all of a sudden I start to make, you know, $100,000 a month. I'm selling, you know, a thousand books per month. I've got people signing up for my newsletter. I've got people signing up for my, my elite masterminds. Everything is going great. So at the temperature just keeps getting better and better. It was at 65, it goes to 70, it goes to 75, it goes to 80, it goes to 82, which is my self-image, my self-esteem temperature, 82. That's my listing, let's say. Here's what happens. I continue to sell books. I continue to make more money. I continue to grow my business. I continue to make more of an impact. And all of a sudden, the thermostat is now, instead of at 82, it's now 85. It's 87, 90, 95. Well, this is where the sabotage comes in for most businessmen and entrepreneurs. So right, anything above 82, I'm uncomfortable with. That's what self-esteem, that's what self-image is all about. And when we're uncomfortable, what do we do? We sabotage the success, we give it back and we get rid of it. You see it all the time. Person's doing great, 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 boom. They make a crazy decision. They make a, a really, a, a silly mistake that they normally wouldn't make. And all of a sudden they've lost the money or they've lost the relationship or they've, you know, they, they're separated from their wife, whatever it is. And that's all, in my opinion, because of the setting of their personal self-image and self-esteem thermostat. I've always noticed that. This is why if you believe in, your, in every fiber of your body, if you don't believe you deserve something, if you don't believe you deserve success, if you don't believe you deserve winning, then your subconscious is gonna do everything it can to reverse the winning and give it back. More comfortable in losing, right? More comfortable back into your comfort zone. Because once I go past 82 degrees, as an example for me, 83, 84, 85, all of a sudden, I'm outside of my comfort zone. If things are getting warm, right? I'm doing better, 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 but you know what? Mentally, my self-image and my self-esteem are saying, Michael, you know, you, you don't deserve to make that kind of money. You don't deserve to have this level of happiness. You don't deserve to be this physically fit. You don't deserve to be, um, you know, this successful. You don't, and on and on it goes. So then our subconscious and conscience start to sabotage. All of a sudden a person can start to, you know, gamble or drink or make bad investments or start to treat people in their world harshly, start to ignore their children, um, escape into politics or pornography or into their phone every day or television. All these things that are the effect, not the cause, but the effect. The cause is self-image and self-esteem. That thermometer, that thermostat. That thermostat. So the thing is, and I teach this in my book, and I teach this in my newsletters, and I teach this in my masterminds. If your thermostat is sat, set at 77 or it's, or it's at 88, how do you keep growing that thermostat? In other words, how do you keep improving your self-esteem and self-image? It's been since you were a little kid and there's ways to do this. There's many, many ways that are important. It goes back to the who you associate with, the books you read, the masterminds you're part of, the podcast you listen to, the type of goals you set, but association envir and environment are two huge, huge factors that I teach in my book, in my newsletter, and in my masterminds. But the bottom line is this, anytime you see friction in your life, where you know you're, you're sabotaging something, or you're having a hard time following through, 
or you seem to have a mental block, stop and ask yourself, am I afraid of winning? Am I afraid of becoming even more successful? Because what does a success in winning mean? So, you know, we have these, we have these limiting beliefs that have been, you know, established in our minds. We weren't born with any beliefs. These were beliefs that were given to us by people around us, parents, teachers, friends, the news, politics. All of a sudden, a person can be, you know, if I get too successful, then people are going to want things for me. People are going to expect things from me. Money's going to change me. Uh, success is going to change me. I'm going to lose friends. Uh, my brother, my sister, they're not going to be able to relate to me anymore. People are going to be envious. People are going to be jealous. Uh, once I achieve this, people expect me to do even more. People are going to try to take things from me. And these are all the limiting beliefs we have as human beings. But the secret is to uncover those, uncover those beliefs and really address the, the question, do I, am I afraid of winning? Is my fear losing? Maybe, but maybe, and even more powerful, maybe you're afraid of succeeding. Maybe you're not afraid of losing as much as you're fearful and afraid of winning. I remember winning our Barclay Cup League Championship finally in 2019, and I believe there was a part of me as the coach and owner of my hockey franchise where I was fearful, subconsciously afraid of winning a league championship. I just believe that my thermostat wasn't where it needed to be. I think that's the reason I made some of the decisions, some of the trades, how we drafted our players, how we protected our players, how we trained our players, how I performed as a, as a coach. All these things went into it according to my self-image and my self-esteem and where my thermostat was at. So when we were about to win a championship, you know, I'm at an 82 and I've got to get to a 90. My subconscious was literally fighting against it. I believe that this is critical. I believe that as an entrepreneur, as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a businessman, we have to ask ourselves whenever there's friction, whenever there's a block, whenever you're pushing and not getting things accomplished, am I afraid of this actually happening? Am I fearful of winning? And then write it down and say, you know what? The, uh, that's how you destroy limiting beliefs, is you write them down and you say and you tear them apart. Well, you know what? If you are successful and you make this amount of money and all this stuff, instead of it people taking from you or instead of people uh, being envious and jealous and all those different things, the big one is think of all the positive things you can do. With more money, you're going to be able to help more people. You're going to be able to hire more people. You're going to be able to build more things. You're going to be able to invent more things. You're going to be able to donate more to your community. So this is a way you can tear those limiting beliefs down. But ask yourself every single time you're challenged, am I fearful? Am I actually afraid of winning? That's what a top 1% badass world builder asks him, himself. Am I actually afraid of achieving this goal? And if you are, write it out, write it down and break it down and see the nonsense that it is. And as far as that thermostat, the way to raise that thermostat every single day to, to grow your self-image and to grow your self-belief and your self-esteem, association with incredible people, great books, great podcasts, and get all the trash out of your life. Get the toxic people, the toxic influences, and the toxic inf uh, chemicals out of your life, okay? Does this serve me? Does this build my thermostat? Does this raise my thermostat? If it doesn't, it's gone. Does this make me a better husband, better father, better entrepreneur, better marketer, better community leader? If not, cut the rope. It's gone. That's how you stop fearing winning, okay? Winning breeds more winning. So you just got to get through that, but you got to be honest with yourself, hold yourself accountable, and use Napoleon Hill's accurate thinking where, hey, what's really going on here? Is it that I'm afraid of winning? And if you are, I just told you the recipe to that mental trash. Uh, two big deadlines coming up. Number one, if you want to uh, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, the Michael McLean World Building Letter, you can do that right now at badassletter.com. I'll send you one of these free uh, badass be relentless t-shirts and uh, a bunch of nice stuff. I got a, a physical copy of my old book. Um, you'll be in, you'll be invited into our locker room. So if you want to become a newsletter member, 
uh, please go to Badass Letter. You have to Friday, the last day of September, 11 59 p.m. Eastern. After that, the doors close for another month. You miss out on the on the uh, bonuses. You miss out on the free gift, and you miss out on October's newsletter. We go. We always send our list to print on the first day of each month, so you have to the very last day of September, so that you don't miss the October edition. The other thing coming to an end, same day, the last day of September, is my how to make more money in minimum time product. Uh, I'm going to be uh, putting that one to bed for a while uh, after uh, the end of this month. So again, on Friday, uh, you can go to blackhatletters.com. That's blackhatletters.com below and uh, check out that product that is coming off the shelves this Friday as well. That's how to make maximum money in minimum time. That's seven years of my marketing life in the insurance business, the barbershop business and the hockey business. Uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars of marketing weapons of mass production. That's it for today. Remember to do what I do. Make sure you hug your wife and children and tell them how much they love you before the end of the day. Nothing is more important. Nothing is more important than the people that matter most to us. When you're home, be home. When you're at dinner, be at home. Be at dinner. When you're going for a walk, be going for a walk. And be mentally present in the evenings with the people that matter the most. Put that uh, gadget and that phone away, lock it away, and be with your wife, be with your children, be with the people that matter most to your, uh, to your family and in your life every single night. Uh, nothing is more important than a, connection, than a connection with the most important people in our world. That's it. Two words that change my life. Two words that will certainly change yours. Be relentless.